Hey yo, what is up guys, it's your boy Twee here. After making all the compilations of the T4 skills, Hyper Awakenings and all, I thought it would be good to place my personal bias into a tier list and compile every single thing that I saw uh, into a single list to pretty much show what I am most excited for and what surprised me the most. Obviously, do take this with a grain of salt. Brawl Shazza bracelets will be coming out very, very soon. And next week will change everything once again. I do take some things into consideration when it comes to absolute potential. But without further ado, here is my TLDR list of what I like about a tier 4 classes. So ladies and gentlemen, I could be going over massive reads and whatsoever about the tier 4 classes, but the too long didn't read will be looking like this. Uh, we got Asura Breaker. Am I hyped for this one? Yes, and there's a big reason why. Asura Breaker, for one, the identity skill will be a little bit shorter, so more damage will be coming now. The only downside is, well, you won't be able to skip your animation and making them shorter. So you really got to pick your battles is one of the things that will be taken into account. However, with the tier 4 skill, uh, there is something that is interesting because if you upgrade this with the Brashaza patch, a 3, 6 or 9 points increase on fighting spirit and Asura energy. This seems, I don't know how massive this really is, but having the ability to go back into your Asura state, that seems very, very nasty. So I'm putting this up to at least the S tier because I'm just super excited. But if I would have to compare it, BK is the absolute king of tier 4. It's nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Having your gameplay change massively, having the ability to get out of your identity skill is nasty. Your rotations change entirely. And therefore, I would believe on top of the damage, BK is the nasty. Enhanced Weapon Dead, I honestly was very underwhelming. The BFG onto the tier skill, it looked nice, but I, I, I would not even put it into B. It was, it was gutted to me. I was hoping for them to have something fun, but unfortunately, nah, it didn't appeal to me one bit. But then Pistoler, Pistoler changed for the better for me because having more buttons on a class that doesn't have many buttons but is spammy as hell, very mobile, I was super excited and made me think like, oh, I might want to get one of these. But then we're coming up with a Deathblade remaining in just straight away S tier because two things. One, having the ability to have your surge always hit a back attack regardless of not facing the right direction is just nasty. But on top of that, Breaking Moon is probably one of my most favorite skills in the game. <laughs> And on top of that, it changes once again people's entire builds. I've seen uh, supercharged coming back, but if you then look at the tier 2 upgrades with the Broshaza patch, it has an attack speed increase for whatever means. It is just... Ugh, it is so nasty. As for Surge, uh, I... I it doesn't change the gameplay by that much, but I really am curious whether the upgrade Broshaza bracelet will change anything massively because it says Death Slash now immediately perform the finishing attack resulting into eight rapid attacks. I wonder whether this improves its capacity of using the mobility, but overall, will this change the rotations of Surge? I don't think so, where I really was underwhelmed with uh, Surge, and I think a lot of people will change the remaining energy. Gravity training was one of those things where I thought to myself, wow, visually absolutely appealing, but its counterpart, Rage Hammer, did outperform gravity training by so much just by feel alone. Whether the actual numbers will add up, I am not quite sure. I haven't looked in it in depth, but in terms of looks, it is definitely better than a Surge Blade, so I put it into the A tier, but I would say the lower A tier. As for Rage Hammer, wow, damage potential through the roof. The only thing that I found mildly uh, interesting was the fact that the Supernova skill was underperforming in contrast to Perfect Swing. 
Obviously, then the Brochelsa patch might change this because, hey, you can get more charge levels, more damage, you get a, a super shield, uh, you get push immunity, which apparently you don't have just yet. So that is quite nasty, but the supernova cooldown for each basic attack seems interesting, uh, rotational-wise, and it changes to a normal skill. What? I, I really don't get what they're gonna do to this, but it is interesting. But the Forced Assault, uh, great looking skill, but definitely gets outperformed by uh, the Supernova, 100%. Now, Control Glavier to me is one of those super biases where I straight away put it into S tier. A reason why is I started off with a, a Glavier Pinnacle and I hated it from the start being a back attack class. I then tried to find my ways to find whether I could make it like all directional class and I did find some ways to do it but it was definitely underperforming. But then I thought to myself why not try Control Glavier. Obviously the damage isn't that great because not many people play it. However, I MVP with it quite a lot because its consistency is absolutely nuts. It however had a few downsides which in tier 4 will be just blasted out of the way and you will not have their weaknesses once again. So if you go to your next X skill, it does one of many things. It will get you mana back. And mana is one of the biggest problems on Control Glavier right from the get-go. It doesn't even matter if you have MP onto your elixirs. Whether you have a support that will increase your mana, I, I really didn't find any ways to really play this without really going out of my way building this character properly. But on top of that, the Dragon Flurry adding toward the whole rotation, it makes the rotation way smoother, no downtimes on any type of skills. So you have a class that had a lot of issues, but with the tier four, I really think they made this so, so much better. And you guys already know what my opinion on Pinnacle is. Nothing changed in terms of the gameplay. I don't know whether I should put it into absolute bottom for now. I might change my mind, but let's face it, I did not like it. Going up to a class that I have next to no knowledge on, and that would be a Gun Lancer. Um, in terms of visuals, I, I would have to look at the videos to know which one I really liked anyway. But I gotta say, in terms of visuals, the class was... That's all right, a dash, nah, that's underwhelming. Never mind, I do not like that one. But the spear thrust, let's see it. Uh, uh, we've seen better, we've seen better. So I don't know much about the classes, so I could be going over it left and right, but let's put it into the B tier. And let's put it into the C tier. Skills looked underwhelming. Awakenings, well, all of the awakenings basically do the same damage. So it's just a stunning visual, which you may or may not like. So yeah, we could be talking long and hard about this, but let's just move on to some things that I don't know. Uh, straight up S tier, something that I am looking uh, so forward to, and that would be another class much like Control Glavier has a lot of weaknesses, underperforming in a lot of ways, uptime, MP issues, so many things that with the tier four will be changed for the better. And I am super excited for playing this class with basically Atrophin on all the time, doing massive damage, having no cooldown issues, straight away super excited for this. And I don't even know how much it will change, but I do believe that with the tier four, a brush as a bracelet, it will turn into even more massive. As for the time to hunt, meh. Probably good, uh, something that I'm a little bit unaware of. I've seen some people play it. Uh, probably, yeah, I don't know. I'm not that excited, but it's probably still good. I would put it up to the B tier. Uh, this is, a, what is it, Drizzle? Meh. Look pretty cool, sunbeams and all that. Uh, but don't know whether it changes the gameplay all that much, so I will put it into the B tier. As for a Blessing Paladins and... In terms of the support, I'm going to be straight biased. I'm going to put them straight away in here because, for one, I would never play a support unless I can see Bible. Because there is no visual input of you having any reference on how good you are doing. Which means you don't know whether you are improving, even if your gear changes. And nothing has been changed just yet. So unless they will change support for the better and give visual inputs on how people are doing, I am going to call this Kaka all the way through. So 
obviously room for improvement but here we got another one support where's the other one and full bloom here we go put them all into the b tier visuals look quite nice but <sighs> underwhelming by default however i'm gonna make an exception dps paladin is one of those classes where i feel and i said this right when paladin came out in kr i said to myself this has one of the most stunning visuals in the game and if dps pally ever becomes a thing i might want to make one and this pff, i'm having a rough time ladies and gentlemen because dps pally looks super interesting always into identity skill you can do massive amounts of damage that doesn't even underperform in comparison to other classes so mad absolute mad gameplay s tier straight away bt zerker changed for the best as well i don't know much about the class in terms of how much it changes but knowing that the rotation changes uh supposedly for the better i heard some big things about the community so let's put it into a tier not really my personal favorite but man massive uh hunger reaper my personal main and I'm, I'm gonna go a little bit in depth on this because it could change for the better and obviously balance patches uh brushes or bracelets later um, everything will change so like i said take everything with a grain of salt but hunger reaper has killer instincts which gives you another dash and another way to uh, improve your damage altogether but the real question to me was do you use either the purple skill or do you use the red skill red skill does a lot of damage and the purple skill uh you can reset that with onto tier 4 barshaza blaze let a cooldown reduction and with Vortex, you will be able to reduce the cooldown even further. Now, obviously, I do think that with uh, the other skill, the green skill where you can reset all of your red skills, it has about the same things that you can do on a finished step. So I am not sure which one of these I would like to play. One of them has more mobility. The other one, well, cooldown. And that to me seems like a lot of fun. Does it really change the gameplay? I do not think so so yeah we'll have to see about that but i definitely in terms of visual still put it into the a tier luna reaper however i am still not sure uh because it has a lot of issues when it comes to uh rotational errors and whatnot so if you are good you might be performing massively and i've seen mad damage coming out of the tier 4 skill but in terms of its ceiling being super high, but the skill cap being absolutely massive as well, I am not sure whether this would be a class for everybody. Still, looking at the absolute numbers and its gameplay, I would still put it into S tier because of its potential. Now, Machinist, uh, looking at the skills, it didn't really impress me. Uh, the damage I am very unfamiliar with, so I really cannot tell on how this is gonna work. As for Machinist, uh, Evolution, this is one of those things where I just go off with what I heard from the community. The fact that you can swap out of your uh, Iron Man stance seems very interesting for it then to fight for you. But the back step and the actual time it costs for you to get out of the machine seems a little bit obnoxious. So in my honest opinion, I'm not really a fan. So uh, I'm going to put this into the B tier as well. Shock Scrapper, massive, I mean absolute massive. I've seen a video where it was doing damage to Behemoth and my god, it is looking absolutely mad. And into contrast with the tier 4 skill, immediately performs gather your energy and performs a final strike. I'm, I'm thinking big papa damage. But additional shock damage based on your shock energy, I'm not sure whether you can do one or two or both. Uh, but it seems so nasty in terms of a hit. So I will put it into the A tier because all of the other classes seem to have massive changes to them. And I don't think this changes massively, but it looked quite fun. And the same goes for Taijutsu Scrapper. It does change the fact that you can get out of your uh, identity skill and then put your rotations up for whenever you wanted to. Uh, the tier 4 skill itself, though, ooh, I got it. Okay, we got to put in some... Run back. Oh, tier four skill. Oh, oh. Hit it in. Out of all of the skills that Taiju Subscriber has, most massive one, biggest AOE. I look. It looks fantastic.
gotta gotta say that. And will the Brochelza bracelet really change anything? I don't not quite know. Because hey, damage state into normal increases, but into tenacity state changes even further. But last hit causes a follow-up explosion. So you mean we get bigger explosions? This reminds me of Blaster of Maple Story. It pff, it looks good. I love it. As for demonic impulse, Shadow Hunter, this is absolutely massive i think a lot of people will be happy playing this character because one it's still relatively cheap to build uh, you get into tier 4 two new skills basically back to back uh doing a massive amount of damage gameplay doesn't change all that much but the addition of many other skills it just seems so welcome it is absolutely insane and knowing that inter tier 4 Brashaza patch cast time reduced of the skill or now do even more hits or both of them is just <sighs> I am so looking forward to the progression of this class. As for suppression, I really looked up some things but couldn't find anything, so I would put this into the C tier because knowing that people are not playing into that, that much showing the footage I'm not sure whether people are just keeping it quiet so they don't get a balance patch. I am not quite sure, but we'll just take it like. Next up is Sharpshooter, and I I really just don't know. With the T skills, I was mad impressed. Both of them looked absolutely fire in two different dimensions because the extra action, the dash, is nutty. I genuinely love this skill. The only downside is the cooldown is mad long. The damage is damn near abysmal. So I am not quite sure whether people will end up using this extra action. Um, I just hope so because now uh, it has an additional chain but the damage minus 50. I don't think you need this kind of mobility because you're still a range class. But having a lock on cooldown uh, with 45%. Uh, percent, Having the ability to dash even further, uh, longer, on lower cooldown, it, it seems like it could change the class. But then the high speed revolve, the drill. This one got me some interesting vibes where I thought the damage in and on itself is just a single cast. Locks on pretty nice, visuals are good, sound effect is nasty. I gotta say that if I look at the Death Strike, I would definitely give that to a, a B tier because it made me think about trying this class out, even though knowing getting into tier 4 is no joke. As for the other one, I would say it's a little bit uh, next to the B tier, outside of the fact that I feel that if you could spam the dash, the class would be so good. The class would be so, so interesting. Uh, coming up with Mayhem, uh, I've seen a Mayhem Berserker onto uh, Theme Mind Gate 4. Uh, did a massive amount of damage, but I didn't think it would change the gameplay all that much. I'm not sure whether the uh, Mayhem Berserkers are happy or not. Um, but I have a feeling a lot of people will change to BT because of the changes in gameplay. Now, I think this is the Barrage Artillerist and the other one is Firepower. Barrage Artillerist, uh, nuts in terms of damage. I... Even if I would disregard the visuals, even if I would disregard everything else, the massive amounts of damage that is coming out of this class would put this straight away into S tier. It is nuts. Absolute nuts. So, yeah, there's nothing that I could go on about that. As for the T skill of firepower, this looked absolutely bad. I did not like this. Would put this straight away into C tier. Uh, because of its visuals alone. Uh, now we're coming up as Slayer. And Slayer has this mad issue when it comes to identity. And I hope for certain. And I think they will, obviously. Because the same thing happens to Gunslinger. Gunslinger, right now, into Tier 2, absolute trash. But if you then look at the changes they made to Gunslinger, I know for sure that they will give some love to Slayers down the next line of patches of uh, buffs. So both Predator... And Punisher, which I will currently put into the D tier because gameplay doesn't really change all of its default. Like, its factory problems are not changed, not for the better or whatsoever. So this class definitely needs some love. As for uh, this little uh, Ayaya class, uh, gotta say the visuals are quite nice, but not as much where I would say, oh, I want to play this class. Then there's two damage classes that I've seen do a, a massive amount of damage, but they are support. So in terms of damage, great. In terms of visuals and gameplay, I don't think it changes all that much. So overall, in comparison to DPS Pally, I would say 
underwhelming. Next up would be a personal favorite of mine, straight away S tier, uh, Emperor Arcana. And you might be thinking, uh, Emperor, why not Empress? Well, because having 20% proc on another card that you might be popping is nutty. And you might be saying, okay, that's great and all, but Empress is outperforming by a long shot, which is true. But having the extra Emperor damage on all of your cards by going from 0 to 40% to 80% is nuts ladies and gentlemen where obviously the empress knight goes from uh 100 to 400 percent damage is probably just as massive if not super nasty but with the tier 4 skill blowing up a card into an absolute nuclear blast having a chance of getting a 50 percent chance of drawing another card is just uh another chance of proccing your emperor or dealing more damage into your rotation because all of your buff up time I have a feeling that if you were play Emperor Arcana on draw all cards and you're spamming X and Z by default, you would not even have to think about things anymore. It would be so nutty and even more epileptic seizures in your brain trying to play this for more than 10 minutes. And then obviously the other one, I got to put this one next to uh, the Emperor Arcana because let's face it, uh, Empress, the damage alone speaks for itself. Having a new red skills that you can proc in tier 4 Brushaza Bracelet, giving more crit rate, which is currently pretty lacking, but also having a chance to return uh, the rune stacks, having the ability to not only do one skill but proc it twice is nasty, but even then, just having so much damage increase coming up with this one skill is just oof the only thing that i would like to wish on these classes is their visuals somehow i did not really like them but still in all other aspects god tier and uh supposedly this is ignite sork ignite sork gained some nasty damage uh visuals were quite good the hyper awakening was underwhelming on both fronts i would say but let's face it the class is nasty, but putting it into B tier, uh, higher up B tier, I would say, but not higher than Hungry. Reflux, uh, still garbage. I don't know who's going to play that stuff or who's going to benefit from it. So, yeah, let's put it up into the C tier because all of the other ones, they seem better. Now, for Full Moon, straight away into the S tier, absolute God tier, probably even higher than the Empress or the Emperor Arcana. And this is, oof. And there's multiple reasons why I would put this one into the S tier. Having the ability onto 1660 to change this character into arc passive with the least amount of investments, getting four Death Lord skills instead of three is nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Gameplay changes then with one of the lowest investments and then looking at the tier four skills, absolute massive damage, but with Brushaza Bracelet, cooldown decreasing, damage increasing, if you will. Uh, you cannot say anything, but this class is going to be one of the best, probably, yeah, next to uh, BK Breaker. Uh, if I would have to put it a little a bit more unbiased, it would be this, that, that, this, that, and then, yeah. Uh, put this one a little down because, yeah, the rest will be super biased. That is super nasty. But we haven't even talked about Knight's Edge. And Knight's Edge is, I would say this dark horse, but so good in terms of just thinking about it. But it has some downsides. The fact that onto tier 4 you get another Z skill, so into your identity, you will be able to pop a skill after doing 9 of the harvesting skills or whatever. Having uh, that gives you opportunity to do more damage, but for one, the animation is quite long, looks good though. But the other problem is, is that if boss phases out of existence, you will not have the possibility to proc the skill. Now, the bigger question to me was with the new skill judgment and the Brashaza uh, bracelet, you get that cast time reduced, which is currently one of its problems, but also get the cooldown reduced. So now I see people use it within the rotation of the identity skill, but I wonder with the extra cooldown reduction, whether it is possible to use this even outside of the identity 
skill and therefore changing the overall capacity of the class. Now, a lot of it will show within the next coming weeks because Brochaza will be coming out next week, but I am very certain that this class will definitely perform into the S tier. But since this is a relative unknown, to me at least, I will put it into the lower, bracket, uh, lower part of the S. As for EO, yes, ladies and gentlemen, what are the classes that I will be making as well? Uh, the fact that this changes the class massively having the ability to uh, reset your cooldowns is one absolutely massive thing having then the ability to uh, use a nasty t skill that does a billion damage on every single pop is just nasty the only thing that you will have to get used to is once again new height management no more dominion that you have to worry about so straight away popping this one into the s tier as for robust now that you can Genki Dama in EO, I don't see why Robust is even in here. Like, we could just delete this class and nobody would notice. I have seen none play this one, put down footage, so I will put this one into the D tier because I am very unaware of what this is actually going to be like. There, we got ourselves Death Blow, a Striker. Now, at first, it looked absolutely massive, changing the gameplay, getting a new T skill which will then uh, reset by using all of the other skills into tier 4. Uh, on paper, it looked massive. But I am very unsure whether this will stay the same coming with the Brelshaza patch because of uh, one of many reasons, actually. If I look at Striker, then you got two sides. We got the Death Blow, we got the Esoteric Flurry. Death Blow, obviously, you get more orbs, you spend them all in one go, and then you reset your cooldowns, which allows you to Rapid Charge, which is the Charging Kick. Now, what I don't understand whatsoever, if you would upgrade this one, it then says, oh, cooldown reduction onto something. Now, why would you cooldown reduce something that is already getting cooldown reduced? So this didn't click in my head, as well as the orb consumption going plus one, increasing the damage as well. This to me screams that this skill is supposed to be an esoteric striker skill instead of anything else. And in comparison, you got the marching strike, which gets a cooldown reduction, obviously nice, but skipping a knee attack, making the animation faster, and then damaging to push immune foes look quite massive as well. But also increasing the elemental gauge, which basically means that you will be charging up even faster. Those two don't sound like they are belong into Esoteric Striker. They then belong to me more into the Death Blow department. So I think a change will happen with the Brelshaza patch where both of these skills will change per uh, engraving. Now, if you take all of those into account and uh, having this uncertainty, I would put them into A tier because, yes, they changed for the better. Uh, visually, absolutely stunning and one of the best Hyper Awakening uh, skills in the game. But not knowing how this will change in long term is very mesmerizing, if you will. And now we're coming up at things that I know little about. I know Master Summoner is mad damage. Uh, I've seen Behemoths drop billions of health by just having a uh, Master Summoner yank out his HP. Super nasty. As for one of the nastiest Hyper Awakening skills, I will put CO Summoner uh, up into the A tier. I don't know how much it changed the gameplay. But the last one up. And I know you guys are hiding. Because I haven't seen many videos, but I've seen some. Where, first intention, it looked good. It looked good and belongs into, I would say, the, uh, no, not the C tier. I would put this into the A tier in terms of damage. But then you got Esoteric Skill Enhancement. And I have seen damage coming out of this that, no, not you, belongs into the S tier. Visuals after the balance patch already, the rework, nuts, absolutely nuts. But the biggest question is, what do you guys think? What are you guys most excited about? This was my tier list, as biased as it can be. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Put it down into the comments. What did you guys think? And I'll 